We are back. We're better than ever. We're excited. You know, we're probably excited because this is our last show of the year. Um, but then we're also sad because it's our last mm-hmm. show of the year. We're not going to see you guys. We're not going to be able to 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 interact with you folks for a couple of weeks. But it'll. But before you know it, the holidays will be over and it'll be sunny and cold out and everything. Snowy and cold out, not sunny and cold. Um, anyway, good evening, everybody. I'm your co-host, Chris. To my virtual left is Rick. Rick, say hi to the people. <laughs> How's everyone doing now that autumn is kicking into gear right chris i can't believe how fast this year is just rolling through it's, yeah well it's, it's crazy. crazy it's crazy too you get the 75 degree day and then you know it's like it's been it's been sort of fall i mean the leaves have definitely yeah. all fallen and everything but it's been a very mild Quasi fall you're right yeah. i don't even know how to dress every like when i yeah, wake up in impossible. the morning i don't know long sleeve short sleeve jacket no yep. jacket i don't know what to do these it's, days it's layers it's all about layers man you gotta you gotta go into gotta go into layers man just like when i used to be in the field all about the layers <laughs> um so well welcome everybody uh so we have a great episode for you guys tonight uh this is our 2022 holiday gift guide i think last year was the first year we did this we had a lot of fun with it um so we figured we would do it again um so hopefully you guys are along for the ride a uh, couple really quick announcements uh, before we kind of jump right on into our list, um, I think we each have 10 items. Do you have 10? Yeah, yeah. Yep. So we got 20 awesome gifts coming at you. I doubt we're going to have any crossovers, but it would be crazy if we did. That would be crazy. So um, uh, just in a couple of weeks, a week after uh, Thanksgiving, uh, PAX Unplugged, the last convention of the year, and Goodman Games will be there with a booth. It's going to be a smaller booth. Um, but, uh, Dieter will be manning the booth and, uh, myself will be there all three days and Matt, our art director will be there. So if you're an aspiring artist, um, you're going to want to come to our booth and check out, um, talk to Matt a little bit. We're always looking for more talent. Um, if you're an aspiring 5e writer, um, come track me down. If you're a fan of the show, come track me down. Um, it's, it's, it's a really great show. Um, it's, it's the biggest show in in the Northeast and the best and, um, the food in downtown Philly is amazing. Um, not that we'll be out of the food coma after Thanksgiving (laughs) already, but anyway, um, it's still all good and everything. So, uh, Rick, what's going on in your world? What's happening? Just, uh, my campaign is flowing nicely, meeting with folks, trying to jump around people's little COVID cases and things still, but, uh, and yeah, I'm just getting ready for the holidays, man. It's just, uh, I had a very busy, you know, my son's birthday falls on Halloween. So that whole weekend was very busy. So it's just one thing after the other, but, uh, very excited for the holiday season. Cool. Excellent. Spooky season is here. Yeah. Um, I have, I've discovered a new game, not discovered a new game. It delivered to me finally on Kickstarter, but, uh, it is, and it's funny. It's, it's a, it's a board game. I'm not normally into the genre at all. Um, but it is a horror themed board game. It is mm. called Final Girl. I don't know if you've heard of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's it, it's it's a solo owner game. You you play the final girl basically in a horror movie, um, and you need to survive and take down the killer. And let oh, me tell nice. you, it is it is thematic, it drips, it oozes, it oozes. Mm theme it is it's wonderful there's event cards and it is just so cool let's just say i i beat the one scenario uh last night the poltergeist scenario i was stuck in a haunted house with a poltergeist and it involved a helicopter landing on the roof and me rushing up to the attic and finding the 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 MacGuffin that i needed to find Mm -hmm. and then jumping on the on the helicopter and going out just as i was about to get slaughtered oh nice um it's an awesome game i've been having a lot of fun with it it's like i said i'm not normally my cup of tea yeah. But just the game mechanics are great. There's so many amazing board games out there these days when we don't have time to get an entire role-playing group together. Yeah. Uh, there are a lot a, of awesome board games. I'm looking at you, Gloomhaven, um, that can it really totally is. sub in um, for that. So uh, that's yeah, what I've I just, been doing lately. I, I just, myself, it's funny. I just supported a Kickstarter for a horror game, which I'm going to mangle the name, but I think it was called Cthulhu, Even Death Can Die or something along those lines. Oh, uh, yes. That's a, that's a um, pretty cool one. Yeah. Yeah. So I kind of, because I, I, I'm not adverse to that genre. So, uh, and, and you know, the whole Final Girl moniker I've noticed has really hit the pop popular lexicon because okay. I've seen books now with Final yep. Girl. There are shows a, with Final Girl, yeah, you know. Show, yep. Yeah. 
uh it's it's kind of like everybody understands what that means now so it's, oh yeah it's fun, yeah you know and 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 this board game is awesome it's very episodic there's there's they call them shows basically mm-hmm. you get there's all these different shows and then you can swap the areas and then the bad guys you can swap them around you can swap around the different final girls from the different so you can oh, like nice. mix and match to Good replay to do and they're all homages to the classic um our horror movies i mean nice. you know, it's just really really um uh, amazing i've really been starting to catch my stride with some of this um uh mm-hmm. solo board gaming in that as i as i move further and further away from having faith in the human race and and not liking <laughs> people so um all right so we are here to spread some holiday cheer we've got holiday backgrounds we got you got baby yoda and his little santa outfit back there we're all set to go uh so th- this is it, folks this is we're gonna have a lot of fun here this is mm-hmm. awesome i probably should have i probably should have had a cup of hot cocoa instead of water but oh well maybe <laughs> next time uh, but we're just going to go down. We, we each have 10, 10 items that we're going to share that, you know, and these are not necessarily gaming items. These are things for your for the for the the geek in your life that you need mm-hmm. to find that, that your geeky friend. Uh, so some of these are you know directly related to to tabletop gaming. Others are just really cool kind of things and everything. Um, so we're going to have a blast with it. So um, do you want to go first, Rick, or do you want me to go? Why I can't you... remember who first. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to remember. Well, go ahead. You can go first. All right. I will go first. So, so I will apologize about my number 10 right off the bat. Um, okay. I, this is when we talked about a couple of weeks ago about doing this episode. Um, this was the first thing that jumped to my mind. I'm like, this is going on my list. <laughs> um, it was an item that was kickstarted um, like two years ago. I think it was in 2020, I think, actually. Um, and I I didn't back it um because I've been trying to cut back on my habit. Um and and I was like, so I went to their page to just to check on it, make sure it was a real thing and everything. Um and this this product did first of all did amazing. Over 25,000 backers, 3.5 million dollars raised. Um unfortunately though, it was supposed to deliver March of this past year. So they're already, you know, uh, nine months, 10 months late. Um, and they haven't even gone to production yet. And it's, it looks like they're still a ways away because of the technology. This this is an item called Pixels. Mm-hmm. And it's Bluetooth dice. Oh. Um, smart dice, basically. Because, because, yeah, everything else is smart driven these days. Why not dice? Um, they light up when you roll them. Um, what's awesome is they actually have a really, really good, useful application in this day and age is there there's supposedly they tie into uh vtt platforms like roll 20 and fantasy grounds so like you can roll actual dice yet they'll pop up on your screen that you rolled them which is really the best of of both worlds if you think about it because i mean if there's one thing that the vtt experience doesn't have clicking to roll a die even if you see it roll across the screen or whatever it's just not the same mm-hmm. and 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 there's no way that they can get that many crits and that many fumbles um <laughs> there's no way i mean we we joke about it all the time um on when we're playing um so uh so that so that's it unfortunately it, it doesn't I, I get it you guys can't run out and buy them um i think there will be a pre-order thing or there will be a way that you can get in um for if you weren't a backer once they become available but um, I just thought it's like a really cool thing. Um, you know, a little pricey, um, $219 for a, a standard D and D set, which is, which is obviously very expensive, but, um, you know, I don't know. It just sounds like really cool. If, if they can pull it off, um, it's amazing. And I'm sure at this point, some other folks have probably jumped on this bandwagon and, and probably did something. So, um, so anyway, yeah, I, I mean, it, 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 I, I hear you, G Blaster. I hear you. It's it's one of those things. I said the same thing. I rolled my <laughs> eyes at first. I was all over it. And I'm like, no, I'm not backing this. It's like, sounds too good to be true. Mm-hmm. Um, and it probably is. But anyway, if they pull it off, though, I, just kudos to them. So that's my number 10, probably an honorable mention since it's not something you can buy um, for this year, at least. But maybe for mm-hmm. for Christmas next year. <laughs> maybe. Well, I will say that we almost had a crossover. Oh no! I had pixels on my list and then took it off because of I, that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, because I am also a pixels. I, I was cheap. I only went with the D twenty, but I am a pixels backer. So you are a backer, okay? I but am that a backer. seems like now that <laughs> so would seems they like got my money too. <laughs> yeah, well, they don't have my money, but but it seems like they've been 
pretty upfront about everything and and it seems like yeah. they've been sharing information and all that from what i poked around on their website so yeah with with a few um i mean with the exception of one prod uh project which i which is not pixels which i will not name that i i think absolutely went south a lot of kickstarters are experiencing all kinds of shipment delays production delays anything coming over from abroad you know which is i think we can all understand that so uh a lot of the estimates for you know delivery and shipment kind of went out the window and and yeah. that's to me common knowledge so i i don't hold that against them so yeah i think uh given their updates they're still on track but yeah for whatever reason i had it on and i think because like you said it wasn't something that the folks could tangibly get their hands on yeah a media mente but really cool product and i've already noticed some copycat kind of products popping up but they don't do everything uh yeah. as far as the app and stuff that pixels is supposed to do so very cool product i can't agree more because i supported it myself so uh okay. yeah wow i can't believe we almost had a crossover yeah it, i'm right not kidding you right that was, it was it was pre i i entered it into my sheet and then it ended up just and it's frankly cooler than a lot of the things i think i have on here so i should have left it anyway all right going to my number 10 um and i'll preempt this by saying my list is all over the place useful items inspirational items just stupid items and uh no particular order i warned chris like just before the show started that it's not really as much a top 10 list as a list of 10 for me so i'll i'll say that going right out front so anyway, my number 10 is the Rushing Water Battle Mat Terrain Set by uh, Stratagem. Uh, if we could put up the Battle Mat images, I think we have a couple of them, Elena. Um, yeah, these are basically like neoprene kind of uh, river sections. And I've seen these now done for other types of terrain as well that you can just plop down onto your, you know, your regular grid mat you know your chessex mat or whatever you can take these little pieces of river and a sort of assemble a river out of them there's different like modular sections um and they even come in like a tough travel bag with a lanyard that is i have it and the bag is like indestructible so very portable made to tote around and just a great thing for those wilderness encounters when you don't want to pull out that same battle map, you know, that you've used a million times with the, you know, with the same, you know, goblin road on it. And you're like, I want something different. This you can just literally on the fly put down a river on, you know, in front of your players and kind of assemble it as you go, uh, kind of carcassonne style. So, yeah. Uh, anyway, Rushing Water Battle Map Terrain by Stratagem. That's my number 10. Cool, awesome. That's nice. Yeah, neoprene is like changing the uh, the board. It's like almost every board game in existence now has a neoprene option right? for a mat, um, and all the good and the board game tables suits. all have the neoprene <laughs> mat. So yeah. yeah, so cool. Um, all right, uh, my number nine uh, is kind of a fun one. Um, it's kind of silly and everything. Uh, this is uh, Rusty, definitely not the Rust Monster plush. He is here in living <laughs> color as well. Uh, this is Creature Curations. Um, I believe I shared these after Gen Con. I picked up my plush at Gen Con. Um, uh, so definitely check them out. Um, and, and also, I, I think uh, I just want to let folks know that uh, um, um, Elena, our awesome producer, is throwing in uh, links to these items or links to where you can find some more information on these items in the chat. So thank you. Thank you very much for that, Elena. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, we've got Rusty the Plush, but they, um, they, uh, Creature uh, Curation has a bunch of different um, plush variety options. Um, there's Igor, uh, there's a Dizzy Cat, um, and they have a ton of other cool little geeky, uh, you know, RPG kind of uh, toys and, and plushies and whatnot. So um, I had the pleasure of actually talking to Brian um, at Gen Con. He was manning his booth uh, when he was there. We had a great conversation. He recognized um you know goodman games right off the bat so we we, we chit chatted for quite some time so um i have to admit my life is certainly more complete now that i have <laughs> both rusty definitely not a rust monster plush and i've got one maybe more than one plush um grogu as well um just throwing that out there so that's my number nine rpg plushes by creature curation very cute. I might have to get a rust monster. I like the beholder, but I, I I have a thing for rust monsters. So yeah, I might just. I even have one of the little plastic rust monsters of lore, you know, tied to my dice bag. Yes. 
I do I remember can't hold that. it up in front of the camera here, but yeah, it's been my lucky charm for quite a while. So uh, yeah, I might have to get a bigger one. All right, number nine. And this, I guess, ties into one of our recent shows because I was wearing a module shirt and, and you asked me, mm -hmm. I think, where did that come from? Yeah. I don't know because that was a gift, but here I can give you some module shirts. Um, I'm a big fan of Etsy. I think as Chris knows, so there's going to be a couple Etsy entries in here. And anyway, uh, a group called Bandersnatch Shirts on Etsy are selling a whole line of kind of module, classic module shirts. Uh, we could put up module shirt image one and two. And basically you just, they have a good selection of the classics, uh, including some of my personal favorites. So if you want a module and you want to kind of show your allegiance to whatever you're a favorite of, there you go. Uh, I think they're $24 or $22 or something. Uh, so that's, yeah, from Bandersnatch shirts on Etsy. Um, I've already ordered one and I think they're going to be more in the way. So cool. I, I, I purposefully did not go down the Etsy rabbit hole. Um, <laughs> we probably could have done a whole show. Oh on yeah. Yeah. Cool tabletop stuff that you can get on Etsy. I think you could easily, easily, I think somebody might have even sent me a link earlier today <laughs> on something. <laughs> on <the text. laughs> um, so yeah, I, I, I actually tried to try to avoid, I think I successfully avoid, I might not have avoided Etsy. I thought I did though, but anyway, uh, that's a, that's a great one. That that's, that's an excellent one. And actually that's not a terrible price, 20, 20 bucks for a t-shirt. That's not no, all terrible. Things considered and something. It's amazing how much RPG stuff is on Etsy. Oh and as as you, Chris, know already, I buy a tremendous amount of my figures these days. I would say about 50% of my the figures that I actually buy to paint, I buy from Etsy because yeah. there are so many, like there's a whole cottage industry of these, you know, oh. 3D printer guys Big turning time. out. And some of these folks turn out some really quality yeah. figures and some interesting, you know, castings, you know, some of these blueprints they use and some use the same blueprints so you see the same you know so you learn to shop you know to get the best price or the best quality uh but yeah i've, I've gotten some terrific figures off of it i don't have any of my list tonight because i honestly i don't think i can still settle down on just one but i've gotten some like that crack can figure that you know mm -hmm. chris that was in etsy so got some good stuff there so folks if you haven't gone to etsy for rpg stuff give it a give it a look you might be pleasantly yeah, surprised if you have an extra hour or two to spend <laughs> at least <laughs> at least <laughs> at least as you go down as you go yeah. down that that rabbit hole and and then you know or should we say blink bunny hole mm -hmm. um and and then you're like you know hunger pains start coming and you look at the clock and you're like oh my god four hours has gone by <laughs> and i completely missed the dinner um awesome so that 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 that's a great one yeah I, etsy bailed me out once i was running literally running an event for a bunch of kids at a local 4-h and i was missing i needed dire rats and i could get them in a hurry and i literally got mm -hmm. them in a couple of days they weren't painted but but they were you know i slapped some paint on them real quick and everything but it was it was perfect i really wanted minis for what i was doing so i really wanted that visual i wanted tactile mm -hmm. and everything so they could see them and play them and it worked out great so so love that so all right so um our plug etsy should sponsor our show it'd be awesome seriously um, yeah uh so all right uh so my next one number eight so folks you knew there was going to be some star Wars. well yeah imagine there's star wars right there um but you know there was going to be a star wars themed gift at least one on my <laughs> on my thing so it was hard to kind of pick just one thing um but i think i found one that i thought was really kind of cool um, this is a is a Star Wars vinyl clock. It's actually made from a vinyl record, um, and, and it's like cut out or laser cut or I don't know how they make it, um, but it's like a cool little scene from from you know kind of some Star Wars theme and everything. I love it. I love the thought of of just having you know, a unique geeky clock is like a really good idea like I, I created my own geeky clock where i took a, a a carcassonne an old carcassonne set and i actually have a carcassonne board with a clock mounted on it and everything and it's kind of neat um because i saw somebody i think on etsy that did one and i'm like i am not paying 100 bucks for that um but anyway so this is kind of cool it's available on amazon so it's they're readily available and it's just kind of neat, uh, reasonably mm -hmm. priced, 40 bucks. You know, I don't know, it's 40 bucks a lot for a clock, you know, probably. I think that's fair. But, that's fair. Yeah, but it's, it's like, you know, it's you, you, the way you convince it to your spouse is that, you know, it's a time to, it's, 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 it's a useful item, you know, yeah. it kind of fits the whole load and everything. So, so I don't know, I just wanted something fun, Star Wars. That's what I came up with. I was like, you know, I'm like, let's go for it. So that's my number eight, Star Wars vinyl record clock. 
you see now you make me want to go and buy a more interesting clock i had i had a classic dracula clock with the dracula movie and i went to just the clock that it's got something about coffee on it and that maybe that's a sign of age so i, I have to get geekier with my clock i really do nice and we got dice station zebra already plugging and or best star wars show so far there we go heartily agree heartily agree awesome show anyway good. we don't want to go down that <laughs> that that is a rabbit hole. yeah that is a, a hyperspace hole yeah um all right where are we number eight yep. uh i guess you could file this under inspirational and also a favorite mm -hmm. of mine i love anything that's like right if it's got a ray harryhausen element in it i'm done i'm sold <laughs> game over so simple blu-ray entry uh the golden voyage of sinbad it is available for seven bucks folks wow. i mean you don't get better than that i mean you know great movie and and the villain is even played by the i can't think of his name the fellow who plays one of the doctors in doctor who you know oh, nice. just for good added geek value um yeah it's such a fun movie growing up all kinds of you know monsters and things in that that any any D, &D geek will you know sympathize with so yeah uh I, just for, i got to See Good now I gotta do a rewatch of that. I gotta do a rewatch. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm in the mood. Yeah, and I and I realize everybody's got their favorites. You know, I had friends who they thought the Seventh Voyage of Sinbad was the you know, or or they or, you know, or or some of the other movies. But for some reason, the Golden Voyage of Sinbad was always the one that you know had my heart. So nice, couldn't resist. Cool, awesome. That's a that's a great one. That is a, a that's an excellent one. I love it. Um, okay, so for the next one, my number seven. Uh, we're going to go toward the scholarly angle a little mm. bit here. A little bit, a little bit, not <laughs> too much. I could have went deep scholar, mm -hmm. but I didn't go deep scholar. I kind of went a little bit more, I would call it approachable scholar. So this is um, one of the la latest books by John Peterson. Uh, this is The mm. Game Wizards. Uh, John Peterson, well-known D&D uh, and tabletop role-playing game historian. He's the guy who wrote Playing at the World, um, now Playing at the World, which has been out for a while now, that is a 700-page thick textbook, and it's it reads like a textbook. It is dry. There are some amazing nuggets in there, but, you know, sometimes yeah. those nuggets are separated by 50 pages. So um, I've read the whole thing. Um, it's amazing. Uh, this is Playing at the World. The Game Wizards came out, I think, a year, uh, a year ago or so, something like mm -hmm. that. M maybe it's even a little bit more than that. Um, but, uh, this is like said, a very approachable read. It's probably 300, 350 pages. This is, is a year by year discussion essentially of kind of the, 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 um, uh, the couple of years coming up to the release of D and D, uh, some of the inspirations of D and D uh, very heavy on Gary Gygax and David Arneson. Uh, for those who know, I, know, I think most of the folks who know here, there's a lot of, uh, conflicting reports on how like everything kind of went down. There's the Arneson camp, uh, the folks from Minnesota. There's the Gygax camp, the folks from Lake Geneva. Um, so this is, I think, John Peterson's attempt to kind of give an unbiased kind of, mm -hmm. kind of a, you know, here's what I think is kind of the way things kind of played out. And he gives a an excellent chapter by chapter, which is like year by year blow, really a ten year mm -hmm. glimpse with with some before and after of of just what was happening at TSR, the number of people hiring. And he's got some real stats in there of like mm -hmm. number of, of, of people that were working at each company. Talks a little bit about Judges Guild in there. Um, you know, touches on a bunch of different things. Uh, the different, you know, uh, the, um, the, the Game Manufacturers Association, the Foundation of Gamma. Um, it's just, it, it, it's a great book. If you're, if you're a fan of, 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 of trying to figure out like, you know, what was it really like back in the early 70s, mid 70s, late 70s, early 80s, um, this is a great, a great reference book to kind of trying to get a feel for it. And, um, and like I said, it's, it's that midway in between. There's been, a, there's been several books that have come out the last couple of years on this topic. Yeah. Um, and this one I think is really middle of the road. It's, it's thinky, but it's not, you know, mm -hmm. it's got some real, it's got some real content in there. So, um, yeah. so that is my, and, and it's available for like, I think it's like $16 paperback. I'm sure it's available on um pdf and probably on audiobook too i i don't know so i don't do audiobooks so uh the game wizards by john peterson my number um seven yes slaying the dragon is uh another one that that one just came out i believe yeah. a couple of months ago um yeah. it's on my list of, of books to get mm -hmm. so um, agree on both counts i 
got my eye on slaying the dragon. I hardly endorsed this pick. It almost landed on my list, so we almost had another crossover. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I was juggling between three books and I ended up picking a different book. Um, mm. not quite so scholarly, but and and this book is totally approachable, folks. Um, and my copy is literally sitting within my eyesight on an Mine end table, well. <laughs> and I've read about halfway through it. So yeah, hardly endorsed that pick. I really get into that kind of behind the scenes and it explains a lot. It fills in a gap for me as to why certain product lines even did what they did at times and, and decisions the company made it. I find it fascinating. And Peterson does his research. That's the thing. It's, oh, you know, yes. G Blaster he absolutely with excellent... kills, kills the research. So, you yeah. know, G, G Blaster uh, with a great comment uh, saying that John is a great steward and curator of the history of, of this hobby. Mm -hmm. I could not agree yeah, more yeah. than that. So yeah. When there's I ran the potential him, for that history to be lost, you know, yeah. and I think it's wonderful that these books are being written about exactly to me, yeah. something that's very important, you know, yeah. to when many I, of us. I ran into John um, at Gary Con a couple of years ago in the hallway, literally, and I just had to thank thank the man yeah. just just for for everything that he does to 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 keep that history alive and yeah. to be able to share that history with other folks. There are so many people in our industry, not in our industry, playing the game now. That's probably come in the last five to 10 years that do have no idea of all that history and everything yeah. that went on. And it's, it's, you know, without people like John Peterson, we wouldn't have that, that point of reference really. So yeah, thank you to him. So yeah, there's a, there's somebody we have to think about maybe as a potential guest or some, you know, to reach. I have actually, yeah, that, <laughs> that if we can get, if he's available, that would be a wonderful thing. All right. Where are we? My number seven. Okay. For the DM, who's not afraid to, torture their characters just a little bit and this is coming from the man who last last week or last show you know ranked two mahars as my number two uh another etsy from grandmaster's merchant uh you can buy your own deck of many things a physical copy of Ooh. deck of many things now there nice. are quite a few different copies of deck of many things so you know this particular style is not up your alley um and and, and we have the elo of it you know, obviously you could shop for a different one, but I, I thought this particular one, they have even like deck of illusions. There, there are merchants on Etsy that are making these various decks, but to me, you can't beat. It's just what Chris said about the dice. You, If, if you're going to make your poor par characters go down that line of pulling a, a card from the deck of many things, give your players a real deck. Let them do it right. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Shovel the deck, put it on the table, let them pick a card it'll beat any, you know, online thing you can do. So nice. that's my number seven deck of many things. The real deal. Oh. I think it's $20 to me, it, you know, yeah, it may only get used once, but you know, it's all about the experience. So, yeah. Oh, I wish I would have put that on my list right now. Um, my deck of many things <laughs> comes from Gary Khan this past year. Gary yeah. Khan did one with a uh, limited edition, a very limited edition run, limited print run. I actually had Tim uh, Wadzinski pick me up my copy and then he mailed it to me because we didn't meet at Gen Con this year. Um, but I was worried that they were going to sell out and I think they did sell out. Mm. And I think, um, I think Jeff Easley's done the art. I know Chris Arneson, wow. all the artists have done it. So yes, I've got my copy. Um, and again, I, I spent a fair amount of money for it, but again, it was one of those things where I didn't have one and yeah. I just thought it was a great idea. And yeah, I was like, totally too cool so i'm wishing i would have put that on my list so yeah regrets already regrets regrets so all right uh we are at my number six so um i think most of you folks out there know i'm a huge board gamer obviously i was just waxing poetic about a board game before we got started here so i wanted to put a board game on 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 my list and i wanted to put something that was you know very thematic very similar to you know a tabletop role-playing game you know, I could have went Gloomhaven. I could have done that. You know, that would have been, especially the Jaws of the Lion, very approachable, very inexpensive, available at Target. But I didn't. I did. You know, I, what is, I throw this question out there. What is the most exciting part of playing a tabletop role-playing game? The most exciting part for the players? You know, think about it for a little bit. Maybe maybe we'll let the chat think about it for a, a moment or two before I spoil what that what that is. I think most people will agree what it is. But undeniably it is not monopoly no rolling dice <laughs> yes rolling dice we're getting warmer here but but really 
one of the most exciting things that a player can do in a role playing game is rolling up characters. Mm-hmm. I mean, that is the the bomb. I mean, come on, everybody in study hall when I was in high school, I used to spend a lot of my study hall rolling up characters, characters I never used before, never used in a game. But you know, I'd buy all the equipment and do everything. So there's a board game called Role Player, which is exactly that. The game mm-hmm. is all about rolling up an an optimized player character and then you don't use it (laughs) you don't actually play with it there are expansions that you can actually use them um and other whole games that you can actually kind of import them but but this is a a dice drafting game where you roll fistful of dice um and then you draft which ones you want and their colors and numbers are all Mm -hmm. important and then there's ways to manipulate the dice and then there's like you need to you need to you, you you start off with a character and a race, and then you're trying to fulfill everything that that character wants. You know, if you have a fighter, you want a high strength, and if you, you know, and you, if you're an elf, you want, you know, high dexterity and all that. Um, it is really, really cool. It is very intuitive. It's just so creative that somebody just took the theme of creating um, a, 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 a player character and turning that into a board game experience. Mm-hmm. I just, I love it. And there's been so many expansions. I have a big box that's a big set that fits all the expansions in it and everything um it is great i mean it is it's just it, it's it's a lot of fun is it as fun as actually creating a character and actually playing a role-playing game nope but like i said sometimes we don't get that option and uh you know mm-hmm. it, it's just a lot of fun so that's my it's available for about 45 dollars. it's on amazon it's on almost you know wherever you buy your 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 role playing stuff you can get it um if you go down to your friendly local uh game store i'm sure if you just tell them to order it they'll get it for you as well so a uh, role player the board game um base game lots of expansions that is my number 6 nice i love that somebody took that theme and ran with it i i i have a player one of my players named mark loves to roll up characters he he will roll up more characters than can ever be used i think because he simply loves you know getting the 18 strength to come up or yeah. whatever on the day no so i have to target him because I've, I've been thirsting for some board game action since the pandemic you know yeah. D has actually been easier to play than board games but as you know i love both so uh yeah i know my history I might have... professor dropping a traveler um thing there traveler the role-playing game where you can actually die during character creation love mm-hmm. that i've never played traveler never even read the rules it's on my list of things i really want to pick up a nice a vintage copy of like the 1977 or 78 traveler uh set of rule books but mm-hmm. um but yeah apparently when you're creating your character apparently you can die during character <laughs> creation which is just amazing so love it love wow. it so thank you history professor for sharing that and you you know you're right yeah the tabletop simulator is i i i do use other means recently i played on steam you know and i kind of went but again i i want people at the table damn it but yeah. uh all right so where are we number six uh yeah. all right i i think chris will like this one um Total collectible kind of went the collectible way on this one. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons cartoon classic figure set. It's being sold kind of all over the place, Target and everywhere else. Uh, they're not out yet, so I almost didn't put it on my list, but they're, they're supposed to come out in February 2023. You can buy these things like separately. So if you like the old D&D, you know, cartoon. Yep. Uh, they do have sets where you can, I think they have one set that's got like the dungeon master and Venger or whatever is like one set, you know, but, uh, they've got one big mega set too. That's like, I think it's about a hundred dollars and you, you know, you get the principles basically. Um, so if you have a soft spot in your heart for that cartoon and we, we will talk about that cartoon on one of these shows, I think, uh, Oh yeah. We got to go. We got to go there, you know? Um, Um, definitely i'm there man I do, we'll, do, we'll do a bunch of shows we'll do a bunch of shows but i do a top 10 episode top 10 favorite episode yeah, there we go that. yeah so, so but anyway awesome. yeah for for fans of the show you know who who remember that show there you go there that, that'll scratch your itch I, I i love it i love it um i didn't put it on my list i actually have an almost complete set of the iron wind miniatures mm-hmm. i think it's iron wind that came out a couple of years ago. I'm only missing Venger, and Venger is like over a thousand bucks now. Wow. And yeah, and I can't. Yeah, we're not doing that. So um, all of them have gone up in value. They're a little bit bigger, I think, than the ones mm-hmm. that are that are coming out. I forget. They're like I don't know. They're probably like eight inches tall or something like that. But anyway, I do I do love. I said that was, that was a great idea. I actually thought about that, but since I knew those weren't available. 
but I'd forgotten because I'd seen that the, the other set that would have been a perfect one to do. So man, yeah. that's like two things you put on your list that I there we go feel like drop the ball on. And so. these, you know, these kind of figures are coming back in a big way because I've noticed some like War Duke fi figures. Oh yeah, yeah, now and this kind back. of stuff. So yeah, there's that you know that nostalgia yeah. market. You can't beat it. So. You can't. You can't, man. It's awesome. It's like it's it's just it's it hits the sweet spot for us. Exactly. It's the sweet spot. Exactly. So all right. Um, my number five, this is kind of a crossover with you. Kind yeah, of, okay. sort of, kind right. of. Um, I, I wanted to also have some cool geeky t-shirts. So I decided mm -hmm. to pick an entire website um, that just catered to the nostalgia and the geekiness. So I went with 80s tees. Mm -hmm. um, now, I full disclosure, folks, full disclosure, these tees, these t-shirts are expensive um they are like 40 bucks a shot um there are coupon codes everywhere out there in the ether world so um but anyway just one stop shopping uh 70 even though it's 80s tees they've got tees from the 70s the 80s the 90s even today tv shows movies cartoons comics uh video games you name it they're there they have awesome um uh, welcome mats they have an awesome dnd &D welcome mat where it says welcome and it's got the D, &D logo and it's mm -hmm. roll for initiative god it's like i would love to have that on my store <laughs> um but anyway um it just it just absolutely cool i i guess i just wanted like you said a fun one i, I you know again the the module cover idea would have been even better too but i just you know there's D, &D cartoon ones there's gi joe uh, you know, there's Care Bears for the Care Bear fans out there, um, you know, and the My Little Pony, you got to have those too. So, um, but anyway, so I just went with uh, 80s Tees, uh, check out their website. Um, I think it's 80stees.com. Again, little sticker shock, but you know what I mean? You get, you, when you're given a present, you know, it's, it's kind of like, you don't look at the price tag and everything. And, and, and it is one of the things when I go to conventions, generally i'll go to a convention i might not buy anything except for a few geeky t-shirts just because of that it's like they're there sometimes you can get them on a, on a good deal on the last day um and it's just one of those things it's like you know i don't have to pay shipping for it and it's like i can actually see the t-shirt and feel the quality and everything so it's just one of the things i usually pick up a couple for it makes it makes a good gift so 80s tees my number five nice i'm struggling not to laugh because my the mat outside my door says roll for initiative. So wow. Oh my God. That's too funny. So it's actually worn to the point where it's becoming illegible. So I'm actually planning to replace it soon. And they have other I found another mat that says this is not a trap door and it has like a square. Nice. On it, you know? oh. So I might go that route. But yes, for the at the last two years or so, I have had a mat that says roll for initiative outside. I, I you know, so my, but if nobody else the mailman knows i'm a geek you know so there it is and that way he'll take it. care of all those geeky packages that come it, exactly know. yeah he knows so yes all right so where are we my number five all right this falls squarely into the do you really need it no <laughs> but is it fun and stupid yes category um this is uh from a company called Lynx. this is the healing potion token set um and we have oh two images for this for the potion tokens this is essentially a, a set of little plastic sort of potion vials of different colors one for each of like a different shade for each of the grades so you have for a potion of superior mm -hmm. healing and you know so you've got one color for each of those potions so there's a bunch of those but then there's also special dice included, the exact number of four-sided or whatever it is, you know, dice for each potion that are also color-coded. So essentially you get like a kind of set of dice plus these counters. So whenever like, you know, a character, let's just say they had two potions of healing and one potion of superior healing, you can give them two of the lighter potion plastic tokens and one you know darker token and give them the dice and when they use one they just roll the dark purple dice for the superior or whatever nice. it is and it's it's kind of silly but like obviously you could do this i'm sure with you know a pencil and pad if you wanted to but you know where's the fun in that so there we go a healing right. potion token set i can't say that by links <laughs> awesome i think the set is 24 i think a little expensive maybe but you know again for a good frivolous gift 
Okay. Well, my number four actually just fits in perfectly with this. Oh, I think it's okay. actually the the picture that I think I have, I think is actually by the same company. Oh, so man. this is, again, another thing, another game aid um, that you don't, you definitely don't need at the game mm -hmm. table. But you know what? Um, especially when you're like us and you're getting older, the easier that you can do things and those visual cues you can have, the better. Mm -hmm. These are the uh, the D, D condition rings. Yes. Yes. Probably yeah. seen. These are the little company. rubber rings. Yep. Um, with all the different conditions, poisoned, uh, mm -hmm. restrained, invisible, whatever. And they, they fit around the round bases of your miniatures. Or if, if it's a monster or something, you can just kind of throw it over its shoulder or, or over its arm or whatever, over its pole arm or whatever. Um, again, I actually like these. I love the fact that each different one is colored different. If they've got yeah. the name written on it. But the color thing, the fact that you can be, you know, the, mm -hmm. the, the battle mat can be way over there. And the rings on it, and you can tell up oh, that guy's restrained. You know, mm -hmm. it's like I, I know that that guy's purple means restrained or whatever. So, um, again, not necessary at all. But you know, especially when you're running a game and there's a lot of people at the table, you got six people at the table, and it's it's honestly on the game master, especially as we get older and older, it's harder to keep track of everything mm -hmm. when you have six people literally trying to vie for your attention. So, so any kind of things like this, especially visual cues, I really dig. Um, Forty dollars for the set. It's like ninety six rings or something like that, mm -hmm. I think. And they're all different colors. They got several of the same type, um, and then it comes in a little carrying case and everything. Yeah, I mean it's a little expensive, but you know what? If it's something where it would really benefit your table, excellent, excellent present to get your game master. A yeah. nice little thank you for all those hours that the game master spends prepping the game, and then you show up and you literally spend five minutes before just looking up your spells and your magic items and everything when the game master spent hours and hours the week before. Mm -hmm. Um been there, done that. So uh definitely a little nice thank you to to give your game master and everybody at the game table benefits from it. So yeah. um so D, D condition rings, um that's my number four. And that that is indeed the same company. And you know, I there's a so. lot of companies that make condition rings, but I think the set you just put up is actually the best set. That's sort okay. of the definitive or yeah. or certainly one of the bigger, nicer sets out yeah. there. According to Amazon, it is. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because you can see there's so many rings in that set that they yeah, pretty yeah. much covered it. But I, I not too long ago, I ran a combat that had a lot of undead, a lot of skeletons and things running around. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we had a cleric turning and different effects. And there was somebody else doing some other effect, a hold effect or something. And it got complicated. So, yeah, I'm a fan of that kind of stuff, you know. Nice. All right. In the same line, I guess we could consider this a nice little gift for the group, but also for the DM. And, and I think it's got utility to it. Absolutely. This is another Etsy. Uh, Wildbot 3D, they make a, a initiative tracker set. And essentially these one, now there's all kinds of initial track, initiative trackers on Etsy. Every kind of wood craft thing you can think of, you know, they've even got swords that you stick things in and all this kind of stuff. But this particular set, they hang over the DM screen. So essentially, and there and there's, you know, you can print via like an app and you can print little sheets or things to put in these. So basically the side that shows to the players could be pictures of their characters, but then on the back side of the DM screen where it hangs on, you know, the DM side, it's got all the names. So you can have the names of, you know, the characters and the monsters and you can just move them around on top of the DM screen. Everyone can see these, the actual plastic that you get. I've got in the picture we're showing, they're black, but you can get black, red. You can get a mixture of black and red. So like if you want, you know, your bad guys to be red and stand out, you can do that thing. And I really like the design. I've been using this magnetic initiative tracker thing I got from Paizo or somebody for a really long time. The thing's like worn to death. I have that one too. Yeah. And it's a good, <laughs> it's a good, but I'm, I'm kind of looking to, you know, replace it and, and level anyway, up his game. I, what's that? <laughs> He's looking to level up his game. Yeah. I got to level up that. Well, you know, as we get older, we get a little more disposable income, you know, so we can start, you know, buying some of these things. And, and again, this thing is, it's not, you know, this is, it's a $20 thing. So uh, I thought it was really cool. The fact that the players can easily see, because my players are always asking me who's next, because with that magnetic tracker, I keep it behind the DM screen. So it's sitting oh by me and i think it's getting to the point where i should let some player deal with that frankly that's <laughs> you what know? i do i should, that's what yeah, I do. I should I delegate have, I, and be like hey you yeah. you you be the initiative guy <laughs> yeah <laughs> i do and then i and uh, i have it on i have it like on a little um 
easel so everybody oh, can okay. see it. It's see, like at the end, and yeah. then one person does everything. And, and yeah, you're right. I turn that right over to the player, and I do yeah, it that see, way. I can smart. still see it, and everybody yeah. else can see it. So yeah, I have to do that. But yeah, the way I've been doing it personally is I, I just have mine sitting behind my screen. So my players are always asking me who's, you know, reminding me, like, who's next again? So if I, I figured this this one shows everybody and I don't have to, you know, be reaching around. So anyway, uh, yeah. So that's by Wildbot 3D on Etsy, 21 bucks. Nice. All right. Um, th again, that is, I think, the third one that I think you're winning this comp. If this was a competition, <laughs> I'm like that. Why did I not think of that? I'm hoping that my number one and two blow you out of the water. Um, God, that's all I have to hang. Well, I'm already enjoying the point. ones you put up. Yeah. I have to say, okay. this is like one of the so, shows I kind of look forward um, to because I really wanted yeah. to see what well, Chris would throw at me here. So yeah, well, the the number one and two are somewhat unrealistic, but nice. anyway, we'll get to it. So okay, so my number three. Um, before I hit you with the two big ones, yeah, the two mm -hmm. the two big ones at the at the end of the show here. Um, I got a, a more simple one here. So these are retro travel posters, and I love the art feel for these. Um, and we've got the Lord of the Rings version that we're um, showing there. Uh, classic art, set of three. Uh, these are available in Lord of the Rings, Star Wars, Harry Potter. I'm sure they're available in other things, too. Um, available in different sizes. They start uh, for $25 and up, depending on the size. But I love it that there's different sizes available. This oh, nice. This is kind of cool. This is kind of art that, you know... You hang in your house and you get the mundane folks come, the muggles come, and they don't necessarily know mm -hmm. that it's that it's that it's a geek thing. You know, it's like mm -hmm. if they look at it closely, they'll figure it out. But like, you know, you can feel you can fool your parents with these <laughs> kind of thing. They just think it's a nice piece of artwork kind of deal. So um, so anyway, it's simple, it's silly. I just I really like this. I just I love the art style. It's kind of like that um national park art style um that mm -hmm. that that seems kind of popular that kind of feel and, and just the whole travel thing and um and i know there's a whole um there's a whole bunch of t-shirts that are uh along these lines too star wars you can do this till the cows come home with all the different planets but um but i went with this one uh, mostly for the lord of the rings feel so mm -hmm. um, lord of the rings retro travel posters set of three um and uh and 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 we'll throw the link up there when um when Alina gets a chance. So and and history professor, as far as the um the the condition rings, that was uh just go onto Amazon.com and put D D condition rings and it'll just pop up for you. So that was my number three. Nice. All right, where are we? Number three. Okay. Yeah. Um now there's this is a whole line of products. This again falls into the collectible category. This is the D D modern icons product line which they've got some cool really cool stuff out here but i want to single out something i bought particularly that i own so i can i uh -oh. can vouch for it mm -hmm. um this i think was a gamestop exclusive but it's still being sold it's still uh being sold for 60 dollars. and this is the gelatinous cube figure mm -hmm. um now story here i bought this thing to put on my shelf and i thought when i bought it i think i actually bought it for 50 dollars at the time now it's being sold for 60 and i thought oh 50 is a little steep you know but the detailing looked cool i love i have a soft spot for gelatinous cubes you know so i thought all right i'll just put this thing on the edge of my shelf you know as kind of put the you know against the books to keep the books from falling off the shelf or whatever because i have one of those geek bookshelves packed with stuff and then I got the thing and it came in a box that was almost the size of a bowling ball box. And I said, what is going on? And I opened it up and it's huge. <laughs> so this, this is the size of this thing. I don't know if we can, uh, this is how big this thing is. It's probably wow. not going to sh show what the detailing on this thing is gorgeous it's got an adventurer half being eaten in the back there is a goblin that's you know i guess jump tried to jump in there and get a bite of the adventurer and he's melting too it's great i can't describe how much i love this thing it it's like it's my centerpiece of my dining room table you know my my you know my family we eat around this thing <laughs> <laughs> wow. So there you have it. The D D modern icons gelatinous cube figure. <laughs> that is so cool. That we're going, I thought you were going at don't they? I think they're doing a pre-order for a Tarask right now or something. I think mm -hmm. I think that's in the same line of it. And I'm sure that's gonna be, you know, the size of a dog. Um <laughs> but uh yeah, so, wow, <laughs> that is so cool. That is really you know, really it's neat. funny. They're I don't know if it's uh, there's a couple different lines out, so I might be mixing my lines up. 
but I think it's the modern icon. There's also a, a set that is like Monster Manual monsters, mm -hmm. basically taken from the original Monster Manual cover. So there's yeah. a Boule and there's a, you know, yeah. Carrion Crawler and a few other critters, you know, in a set. And I think that's under the modern icons banner too. I'm not 100% sure, but yeah, if you, if you're into the kind of figures and stuff, this is to me the creme de la creme when it comes to cube right. figures. So, oh, that's so <laughs> awesome. That go really good with your D and D figures when they come in <laughs> in February. So, hopefully, the right scale. All right. Um, okay, so I'm really excited about my number one and two. Right. So, uh, so number two. So this is all right. So we're getting we're getting into some of the pricier things. Oh boy, I will, I will ignore that. Yeah, this is this is definitely you need to have you know disposable income on this. Um, this is the arcade one up game cabinets. So, mm. so I have always, ever since I used to watch, yes, I admit it, I watched Silver Spoons when I was a kid, and that rich kid had freaking ca arcade cabinets in his <laughs> whatever foyer, whatever the room that was, game room, whatever. I've always wanted a arcade game cabinet mm. in my game room, always. And these arcade one up game cabinets are actually reasonably priced mm -hmm. uh they started about 450 bucks all right um they're not full full size cabinets um they're designed to actually be sitting on a stool they actually sell the stools separately um but you can get like a pac-man stool for it but there's a riser you can get where they're i think they're about five feet high maybe so they're mm -hmm. not they're not all the you know like a regular i don't know i was a kid though and they always towered over me so maybe maybe i've just gotten bigger now and maybe <laughs> arcade cabinets really aren't that tall but but anyway um but what's really cool about these is they ship kind of broken down they're they, they've got this video it's like a five minute video on how you put it together and hook mm -hmm. everything up and it's super easy and um, so it's like they, they you know, a couple screws basically. And, you know, in like a half hour, you can have this thing together and you could be playing Pac-Man, Galaga. They have Dragon's Lair for crying out loud, mm. which is awesome for anybody <laughs> who lost dollars and dollars and dollars on that. Um, but anyway, um, you know, and I, and I hear some of them, the sound is not great. Some of the screens are not like is as as cool as they were. But um and, and there are some expensive there are there are models out there you can get the full ones for like two three thousand dollars where you can get those huge monster sets but but this one I think is a is a reasonable alternative there's a lot of YouTubers that have done um reviews on them and they've used them daily for like six mm -hmm. months and then they come back and do a video and say here's how it's holding up and you know and everything so um this is something that i will probably own at some point um not yet but at some point i will probably i just need an excuse to get one i don't know what that excuse is but um but anyway yeah they don't they don't take quarters so maybe that's what the excuse is so um arcade one up game cabinets um again uh we'll throw the link in there you can you can see what they have there some of them are on sale i think that the dragon's there is a little bit more expensive than like pac-man or whatever but um this that doesn't say any more than a geek than an 80s yeah. style game cabinet in your game room so um that's my number two nice i don't think is there anybody who grew up in that era who didn't want one of those in their house oh i mean gosh, seriously yeah. i yeah. spent i lived in arcades i I, did too. I I was the pac-man master i used to play pac-man until i was eating the keys anybody who knows pac-man knows what i'm talking about Wow. uh defender pac-man and all that stuff oh my yeah. goodness the time i spent playing that stuff i i, I was terrible at dragon's lair i played it but i was the type it, it was easy you know i was very profitable for the dragon's lair people because yeah. i would put in my fit and dragon's lair was always like 50 cents it was or 50 dollar, cents so. too yeah that was like yeah. the first 50 cent game it was like yeah Whoa, 50 it was cents. like and wow. i would play it make one wrong move and the guy yep. would make a face and i'd be like what <laughs> there yep. went my 50 cents so but yeah but that that's such a cool definitely yeah higher up item but what fun is that man awesome great all right so where are we all right mine's mine's not as uh exciting as that i'm afraid i i am also have a board game entry here i tried to go somewhat thematic here it's not a new game so folks who play a lot of board games will certainly know of this one but i think it's a solid game and it fits the theme and that is and chris is going to say oh yeah and he's going to not that is the Lord of War Lords of Waterdeep board game. It's 
personal favorite of mine's gotten so much replay i've got the expansions and all that i've played it online via steam i just played it this past weekend with my kid and a friend and we had a good time very approachable so it's got enough of the theme that it's fun for D and D folks or people who are into the Forgotten Realms. But if if you're playing with people who aren't into the Forgotten Realms but are into D and D or frankly aren't into the RPG scene at all, it's still absolutely you know they don't lose anything. It's at its heart, it's basically what it's like a Euro resource management game, really, yep. when you get down to it. Uh, but it's a fun one. I think it's a very solid game design you know it's a popular game it's certainly seen its popularity there are uh you know expansion packs available that make the game better not every board game that with expansions <laughs> you know works that way as we know but i think in this case the expansions are not terribly expensive and they're worth getting so yeah that's my i i think right now you can you can get the base board game which is plenty for 29 dollars. it's available all over the place amazon and everywhere else you know any target or any kind of big big box store would have it as well uh so that's my number two for something in the theme but also i think a totally solid board game oh yeah without a doubt um we've played this many times this one got us through the pandemic on steam definitely um my gaming group which is somewhat into the indie but not like mm -hmm. hardcore like i am obviously they love the game for it being just a worker placement euro yeah. resource management game um, but I love it for the flavor text and the feel and the mm -hmm. knowing all the places and the NPCs that they reference yeah. and everything. That's what I love. The, the, yeah. It just oozes Forgotten Realms and everything. It, it is it is really amazing how well that game is, uh, how well designed it is. And it just kind of came out of nowhere. And the fact yeah. that you know, Wizards of the Coast has yeah. a solid entry in the Euro game board yeah. game space that yeah. is readily available. To us. And that game is probably seven eight years old maybe even easy older? easy, easy. The yeah older. i think it's, it's been older. around yeah it's no that's around. why i said it's it's i think yeah. for people who know board games you know they're gonna yeah. be like they know it yeah but totally for folks for folks who are starting to kind of go down that euro path um you know it, it's not just one of these vanity products that was put out by a rpg publisher it's a solid board game design you know i think nice uh so yeah Cool. and the electronic version is well implemented too very right? well very well I, I think the right right maybe with the exception being ticket to ride which i think is one of the best online implementations you know or, or app implementations of a board game i think water deep is right up there you know with it the is. sound effects and everything else so yeah. if you want to even go that route and try it out first folks before getting the board game but at the end of the day it's it's more fun to play on the board i think totally <laughs> so. but got it yeah lords of water deep literally that and a few other games got us through the pandemic on steam so i mean and not and not gathering as a group so definitely nice. all right where am i number one so my number one not so much a gift as more as an experience uh, mm. let's put it this way it's a travel destination so let's go with that let's go with that so oh, wow this is ravenwood castle um which is a bed and breakfast secluded in the uh, forests literally of southeast Ohio, um, literally in the middle of nowhere. It is it is a bed and breakfast, but their main bed and breakfast house is shaped like a castle, which is amazing. And then around the castle is a medieval village of all these different little buildings, and they're all separate little villas that you can stay in with full kitchen, um, bath, and several bedrooms usually. Um, it is literally there is no cell service there so no cell phones no internet they have internet in their office some super probably cabled kind of thing but um you will have literally no service there uh they have a wonderful library stocked with role-playing books that you can actually reserve and oh, you can nice. run games in their library the library is right off of their pub which is downstairs which is like a medieval pub which is a full food service area where they do, you know, nachos and hot dogs and hamburgers and stuff like that. Um, they do serve you breakfast in the Great Hall. Um, each of their rooms and their villas are completely themed different. There's like the mm. dungeon room. There's the the Duchess's room. There's the uh, the tower room. Amazing. There's the cabins. There's a separate set of cabins down about a about a five minute walk, like down a path. There's a separate little four cabins or five cabins. Um, that you could just rent all those out and you could run the games. This place is amazing. They have a library of, I think, 200 plus games the last time I was there, which was before the pandemic. 
Um, but it is amazing. Um, mm. It's it's an amazing place to go and forget about the world and just mm -hmm. play games. So and you've been there. You've gone. I have been there. Yes, I've been there back in 2018 or 19, I think. Um, I forget which year, actually, we were there. Uh, but we spent a couple days there. It, it was awesome. Nice. There's some really cool hiking and caves nearby. Mm -hmm. um, it's probably about two hours from Columbus, I would say. I mean, it is, it is, it's an hour off the beaten path. You, you're on the interstate and you turn off of the interstate. You are going down farm roads for about an hour. Mm. And it's probably to the closest town, which had a pizza place and I think a KFC, if I'm mm -hmm. not mistaken. And that was it um was probably 20 minutes away probably 15 minutes a 15 minute drive away so it was it's out there um mm. but it was great uh the proprietors weren't there when we actually stayed the caretakers were there um but they're obviously gamers there's special um gaming conventions are actually held there um mm. it would be the perfect place for a, a retreat actually mm. to get away for a couple of days and do some team building and just play some games um, really unique place. And, you know, if you're, if, if you're in the area of, of Ohio, um, and we're not, it was like an eight hour drive for us. So we, we specifically went out there to check it out. We were actually thinking of, 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 of renting out the entire place for an event. Um, we ended up not doing it because it was eight hours away and just mm -hmm. people getting there was going to be a pain, but, um, but we were, we were really giving it the test drive and everything. So, mm. um, cannot um cannot say enough about this place i'm glad it looks like they made it through the pandemic um and and they're still in business um but just love the concept of it um and and it was it was cool it was just really neat and all the different themes of the rooms and everything and the people were just so friendly and everything it was just it was awesome so um wow. so ravenwood castle um i know it's out there it's it's not a typical gift or anything but you know hey what the heck yeah um, maybe some people will find some appeal of it so uber cool all right i I'll, I'll say right out i can't top that i don't think i think that's that's terrific um very cool very very cool i'm going to check that out myself um i i love the fact that you know in these little secluded places you know in america you can have this stuff when you first started to say well it's in the woods of i thought you were going to say like romania or something. i thought about it so, ireland go to ireland yeah so <laughs> uh all right where are we uh number one again this is my number one that uh, just another one on the list uh i did say like i was going to get a book on here um not the same book as you though we came close because i tried okay. to find something i always try to squeeze some kind of uh advice for new gms or something in there mm -hmm. so uh this book is by slifer uh flourish it's also available on amazon I believe Michael Shea is the author, but don't hold me to it. It is Return of the Lazy Dungeon Master. Uh, oh, yeah. Books available for $20. Now, it's a sort of sequel or redo of the original Lazy Dungeon Master. You don't need both. Just buy this one. Um, I'm a big fan of working smarter, not harder, and that kind of you know way. And this book is solidly aimed at DM prepping and DM you know preparation for holding a good game. And I've seen a lot of, there are a lot of DM advice books, but I found a lot of them tend to fall into two categories, either their lists of tables, which are fine, you know, those tavern name tables and that kind of stuff, which yeah, can be totally yeah. useful, but really doesn't give the new DM, I think, solid advice. And then there's books of essays, which also to me are fun to read, but don't really give a lot of practical advice. This book does. This book kind of lays it out. Now, if you're a super experienced DM, yes, you're probably going to see stuff in this book and be like, well, yeah, I kind of know that. But I think for, you know, beginning to even kind of like medium level DMs, it really lays out good ways to prep for sessions and avoid that cardinal sin of over prepping, you know, and basically how to lay things out for the next session. So that's, that's my little entry for the, uh, you know, See them in your life to give them a little help. Uh, Return of the Lazy Dungeon Master by Sly Flourish. Nice. Got it for my son a couple of years ago for Christmas. So there that is go. perfect. Hey, a real world example there. There we go. It's a, yeah. it a great, great gift. So excellent. So that is our top 10 list for the game guides. For This is fun. I think this is going to be a this tradition, was fun. I think. Um, yeah. A lot of fun. We should do an Easter one, Easter present, <laughs> uh, something like that. So, um, but yeah, well, hopefully, uh, hopefully all the folks out there uh, had a good time. Um, I think, uh, Elena, if we can get the link up there to Ravenwood Castle and the Lazy Dungeon Master, that would be awesome. Um, for people are asking, people are asking. Um, but anyway, so, so thanks everybody a bunch again. This is our last show for a while. 
Um, Rick, why don't you tell the folks what uh, what you got to tell? Sure, folks. Well, first off, we had fun doing this offbeat show. I hope you had as much fun watching as we had doing it. Um, as always, we will be putting this up later on YouTube. If you liked what you saw, please give us a like, give us a follow, subscribe on YouTube. It helps us a lot because we want to keep this content coming to you. And by all means, as we always say, keep those comments coming. Uh, after our last show, when we did the, our top adventure modules, so many people put up their top threes and stuff. Uh, I had a ball reading those. So please keep those comments coming. Uh, this is our last show for the season, I know. But we will be back after taking a well-deserved break. And we'll be coming back to you on January 8th at 8 p.m. And then we'll kick off our fourth fourth season is fourth it season yeah and oh, and yeah. Ep this was episode 40 that's crazy so next year i think sometime around june july we're going to be hitting episode 50 we yeah. need to figure out what we're doing we have that. to do something special for yeah, that show. we definitely have to do something yeah special for our well i'm, so I'm we thrilled that we were able to go this far and we keep going this is yeah. so much fun Definitely, definitely. So um, with that, we will share with you guys our pearls of wisdom. My pearl of wisdom is it's it's very straightforward. If you're a part of a gaming group and you're not the game master, please, please, please th throw the game master some love. Um, you know, one of these things that, you know, like the initiative tracker, the condition rings or a, a cool mini or something something that's useful at the game table um, is just a great way to thank your game master and then everybody gets to enjoy it and everything. So something that if, if you're at the game table and you're like, wow, we're just lacking, uh, we need a new battle mat or whatever. Um, just think of the game master and, and, you know, they, they do game masters spend a lot of time prepping and then they get to the table and they spend all week prepping and then yeah. the characters go off into a tangent and then that they're, you know, they're panicking for the next three hours. So so show show your game master some love, um, and and th that that's my uh, pearl of wisdom for the week. And with that, I, nice you know, everybody uh, have a good have a good year. Rick, what do you got? <laughs> that's always good advice. You know, uh, I feel guilty agreeing with that since I'm a, I'm a game master, but it really is true. You know, usually game master is putting the money in and putting the love in. So yeah, throw, show that show your poor game master a little love. Uh, my my pearl of wisdom is very similar i wanted to say kind of hearkening back to one of my items with the little potion tokens you know what don't be afraid whether you're a player or a gm to drop a little money on something that makes fun at the table something that brings a little visual flair brings a little you know excitement or just you know gets it off a pad and pencil and makes it you know tangible and fun I like stuff like that. I, I uh, love these little gadgets and these little things. Are they all necessary? No, but you know what? They 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 enrich the game. So I think, you know, we, we spent so much money on gas and these things that are necessary, you know? So I think we yeah. all deserve occasionally to treat ourselves to these little things, whether it's, you know, going to a castle or simply getting an initiative tracker that looks cool or whatever. So yeah, treat yourself, folks. It's worth it. You're worth it. Yeah, every time I go to, to to back a game on Kickstarter and it's going to be another 50 bucks, um, <laughs> I just think about, well, I just filled up the tank in my car the other day and that was That's $55. It. Yeah. So, and, you know, as, you know, they say you don't really buy gas, you're just renting it. So, right. Um, so anyway, it makes me feel better. It's, it's how I get to sleep at night. So yep. whatever, whatever works for you folks. So uh, again, thank you, everybody. Uh, Thanks, we put a, we put a ribbon on our third season and, um and we are, we will be back and we will be knocking it out of the park and better than ever come january and we'll have some really exciting hopefully some exciting announcements for everybody um and then uh we'll talk about all the awesome gifts that we got gamer geek gifts that we got for our holidays so <laughs> everybody have a great night everybody be safe and uh and enjoy the holiday season enjoy the holidays folks good night night